pretty much know how much I personally love the Sport Compact class. Today let's take a look at one of the top players in the market and basically the Honda Civic's main rival. This is a 2014 Volkswagen Jetta GLI. Now, this actually is the sixth generation Jetta. It's also known as the Mark VI, and it was introduced back in 2011. And when this generation Jetta came out, it kind of was welcomed with the same kind of lukewarm response that the 2012 Civic got. Um, Volkswagen really cheapened the Mark VI Jetta for the US market to increase their sales. Now, over the years, Volkswagen has steadily improved the car, um, addressing some of the cheap issues that a lot of enthusiasts and Jetta faithful really hated. Now, in terms of the styling, let's talk about the design first. Um, it really does emulate like a baby Audi in terms of its design. Looking at the front of the vehicle, it's got kind of an Audi-ish look um, with these headlights, the grille design. Um, looking at the side profile, the Jetta did grow uh, substantially larger for this generation, a little bit longer wheelbase, a little bit longer overall length, and it's a very clean, um, classy, inoffensive design, very dramatic, how it's very restrained. It doesn't really take a lot of chances, uh, even in this sport-oriented GLI trim, where um, if you're going to look at the GLI trim, you'll be, be able to distinguish it from regular Jettas from the honeycomb grille at the front, those 18 inch wheels, which is part of the Autobahn package. There's a little subtle lip spoiler as well as the chrome tipped um, dual outlet exhaust out back. And of course, for 2014, there are new LED tail lights for the GLI and hybrid trims only. Speaking of the Jetta, um, what you're probably wondering is what kind of changes this Volkswagen made to this thing over the years? Well, in 2012 is when they actually brought the GLI nameplate back. Um, and then they addressed some of the issues that uh, this generation Jetta had. The GLI, for example, has independent rear suspension. It has the soft touch dashboard inside the interior. Um, it has the red painted brake calipers. The GLIs have four wheel disc brakes where some of the lower trim Jettas will have drums in the back. But, you know, for 2013, Volkswagen did introduce the hybrid. Um, they introduced the LED daytime running lights, which this particular one doesn't have. You have to get a nav model to get that. This is just the Autobahn without navigation. And then for 14, Volkswagen made some pretty steadily Im steady improvements. Uh, they replaced the two 5 liter 5 cylinder with a 1.8 turbo. I'll save that for another review. However, the GLI got a 10 horsepower bump. It still uses the same 2 liter turbo charge engine from the GTI. It now makes 210 horsepower. So let's get out on the road and figure out and uh, see if that 10 horsepower boost makes a difference. But uh, let's for now, let's take a look at what's going on on the inside of the 2014 GLI. Now, stepping inside the cabin of the all new GLI, you can see it's very restrained. Just like the outside, this is pretty um, typical German stuff here. Lots of black, some silver painted accents here and there. But of course, when you want to step inside the vehicle, it's a very easy step in. This is a compact sedan, which Volkswagen likes to point out that the Jetta pretty much offers as much space as your typical midsize car. Now, the Jetta GLI is available with push to start. The button would actually be right here if you're going to have it. However, you have to upgrade to the GLI Autobahn with nav. This is just the regular Autobahn. So this is Volkswagen's traditional flip style key. Doesn't have push to start, so you have to start the key in the ignition. Typical Volkswagen chime here. The gauges pretty much look like every other Jetta with a little bit more of um, a higher top speed on the speedometer. And then of course the two liter turbo engine starts right up and it's still a phenomenal engine. It's the best part really of the GLI. It sounds just like the GTI's engine when you rev it up and then the dinger is pretty annoying. It keeps going off until you shut the door. Now, uh, in terms of the interior quality for this Jetta, again, it took a big knocking when it first came out. Uh, Volkswagen cheapened the interior. However, they've steadily improved it for 2014. Pretty much now, if you go only for the S or SE models, they'll have the hard touch dashboard, but everything SCL and above, um, GLI, TDI, they'll have the soft touch dashboard with the nice high quality graining. This is basically what you what you should expect in a VW product. The old Jetta had a decently nice looking dash, but it was hard touch plastic. Some faux silver painted plastic here, and then some nice aluminum trim around the vents here. Now, unfortunately, the door panel material, this is pretty much the same hard touch plastic that was on the dashboard of the, of the regular, you know, base model Jettas. I'm a little disappointed to see that this hard plastic, I mean, when I rest my elbows here, this is 
or when I have the windows open, this is where I'm gonna rest my elbows and it's hard touch. Luckily, this is nice and padded here with the same leatherette material that's on the seats. The windows are actually automatic up down for all four. I love that feature. Uh, I even like this aluminum trim here on the window switches. Adds to a high quality feel. Now, the GLI is the only one that comes with this steering wheel. It's basically the same unit that's lifted straight off of the GTI, the MK6 Mark 6 GTI, although it just says GLI here. I love this steering wheel. Nice flat bottom design, very, very thick bolster extensions, gorgeous red stitching. I mean, this is all in the details here. You could probably replace this badge with an Audi badge and people wouldn't even notice. Now, part of the auto inbound package, what it basically gives you, it gives you the Fender premium audio system. This is a nine speaker, 400 watt audio system. Sounds fantastic. I would highly recommend the upgrade here. Much better sounding than the, the premium seven speaker, 360 watts um, audio in the ILX, like my, my long-term car or an SI. And then of course, you'll get this touchscreen radio. This is the premium eight touchscreen radio interface. And you can see it also has the Fender audio system. Now uh, the GLI auto bond also rolls in the dual zone automatic climb control, the heated seats, the faux leatherette, VTEX leatherette seats as opposed to the half cloth uh, partial leather or VTEX leather in the regular GLIs. I love the seats, very nice bolstering extensions. They hold you in place in the corners, very, very comfortable as well. You can see the red stitching is accented everywhere. And then of course, this is the six and a half inch touchscreen radio display. It doesn't have nav. If you guys go for the nav model, you're actually gonna be um, downgrading to a smaller five inch display, but that does give you a backup camera. Unfortunately, this car, when you put it in reverse, there is no backup camera, which is a little bit weird to me. Um, a Civic SI comes standard with a backup camera, but of course it's still kind of trickling down the Sport Compact line. A lot of enthusiast drivers claim they don't need it. Um, the GLI Autobahn also gives you the sunroof right here with um, the controls right here. Now, part of the updates for 2014 is actually VW's in-car or in-net telematic system. Um, this is basically sim something similar to OnStar, Ford Sync services. Um, it basically links you to a live operator if you have to, you know, address any issues. It also has apps uh, apps like Pandora, stuff like that. That's new for 2014. It's accessed via the button panel right there. Now, thankfully, this particular one does have the six-speed manual. You can also go for the six-speed DSG. I highly recommend the manual for you purists out there. But if you can't drive stick, the DSG is a viable alternative. The throws are typical VW here, a little bit long, uh, has that notchy feel. Now, personally for myself, I like the shifter throws in the SI more, but this is still very, very nice. I would happily say that this is excellent and it really depends on your taste. The clutch is also extremely light, a little bit longer travel. It feels actually lighter than a Civic Si. So, you know, overall in terms of the interior of this thing, um, it's pretty much class competitive, not necessarily tops in the class like it used to be. Now, when you look at the back seat of the GLI, um, this is also an area where the Jetta platform, the MK6, is a winner. Um, when VW redesigned this car, they wanted the back seat to be able to fit basically full-size adults. And you're looking at just over three feet of legroom back here. You can see it's huge. When you step inside the back seat here, plenty of space here. Now, unfortunately, this hump right here does take into your third your middle passenger the civic gives you a flat floor but you do get more leg room in this car uh but just one map pocket now the seats themselves very very comfortable very good thigh support as well uh, you get a nice armrest right here with cup holders and then of course the there's a little bit of a pass through right here. The seats also do fold down uh, 60 40, so it gives you that nice versatility. Unfortunately, the door panels, same hard touch plastic uh, from the front seats, but at least it is padded right here where your elbows are going to rest. Now, when you look at the trunk capacity of the GLI, it's also a very, very large in terms of the competition. You're looking at about 15 and a half cubic feet of space here, which is about two to three more than what you get, for example, in a Civic or other compact sedans in the class. The hinges, unfortunately, do crush your cargo here, but uh, the trunk here is very, very well finished. Taking a look underneath the hood of the 2014 GLI, you're going to find Volkswagen's familiar uh, two-liter turbocharged TSI engine. This is basically the same motor that you find in the GTI, although for 2014, it got a nice power bump, 210 horsepower as opposed to 200. 
and 207 pound-feet of torque. You can see there's a little bit of the cost-cutting evident here in the fact that this car uses a prop instead of the struts. The GTI uses struts like most other VWs. Now, this does run on premium gas. Front-wheel drive is your only option. You get your choice between a six-speed manual or the six-speed DSG. Fuel economy is actually rated at 22 in the city or 33 on the highway. Pretty good numbers, pretty much tops in the class, but let's get on the road and figure out how that six-speed manual feels and how this thing drives. Now, I've showed you guys um, the Mark 6 GTI multiple times. I've shown it to you in a six-speed manual model, which we had as a 2010 long-term fleet, and a DSG model a couple times, but I haven't actually shown you the sister vehicle to that car, which is basically the GLI, the sedan version. Now, VW says they tune this to be a little bit softer, a little bit more comfortable for daily use. Let's find out if that's the case, and let's also find out if um, it still has that sportiness that the GTI is known for. Like, like every other true sport compact car, this turbocharged engine is wonderful. And you know, even though it's only rated at a somewhat paltry 210 horsepower, it feels pretty peppy actually. Um, you know, typical with this engine, Volkswagen has always pretty much underrated it, and it's a very fun, refined, wonderful powertrain. Now, surprisingly, even though this is the same engine as the GTI, it sounds a little different in the GLI. The exhaust system in this car is a tad different, a smidge different, and it actually almost sounds like the five-cylinder engine that it's pulling. Um, it's not necessarily a bad sound, I just prefer the noise that the GTI made. It was a little bit of a, a deeper exhaust burble. This is a little bit weird. It's got that characteristic wail, which some of you may like it, some of you don't. I think I always thought the five-cylinder sounded odd. Um, not necessarily bad, just really, really odd. Now, in terms of the steering, um, it feels a little bit lighter for sure. It feels a little bit softer. Everything's kind of tailored back. It's not as focused as the GTI. This car is definitely a little bit softer. And, you know, I'm not sure I really like that. Honestly, for the same, for a little bit more money, I would rather have the GTI. It's a more focused sport compact. And I also like the fact that it's a hatchback. But of course, Americans and their taste, we don't like hatchbacks, apparently. We like sedans. Europeans like hatchbacks. Personally, I like hatchbacks. But, you know, in terms of the rest of the driving dynamics of the GLI, I do appreciate the softer ride quality in this car. Um, it makes for a much more comfortable daily driver. The back seat is a little, bit, a little bit bigger. In terms of interior space, this doesn't feel much roomier though. It feels about as wide. This car is a little bit longer than the, the GTI, so I do appreciate the fact that the GTI is a little bit smaller. It's a little bit more nimble. Now, in terms of how this car compares to its main rival, a Honda Civic Si, or even our long-term ILX, um, this actually feels a little bit more refined, surprisingly. The ride is softer, but in terms of quietness, I actually would have to say it's about the same. The only thing that the ILX has is more road noise, or I'm sorry, more engine noise, but that's something that I genuinely like. Some of you may prefer the more subdued um, voice of this, or growl of this turbocharged four-cylinder, which I must admit, it does fade away into the background when you don't want to hear it. That's something that the ILX, or even the SI, has the engines kind of always around, you're always hearing it. Um, and then of course I do like the deep reserve of torque that this turbocharger engine gives you for sure. Now in terms of the visibility, uh, this car is also quite good. Um, you have pretty big side mirrors here, a pretty good view out of the back. There are no weird shapes or designs or you know, sloping roof lines that, that a lot of other uh, you know, stylish stands give you. So you have a very nice view of the road and even from, the, you know, from sitting from the driver's side here, the, wind, the hood is nice and low and it's just really easy to drive this car. It's really easy, it's really fun to drive and I can see why the GLI is still tops in the class in terms of the Sport Comp packs on the market. Now, let's talk about the six-speed manual shifter. Now, this is basically a case of your word versus mine. I personally like the snick snick feel of the shifter you get in the Honda Civic Si more, or even my ILX, but that's not to say that this is a bad shifter. I actually do like this shifter a lot. I love the stubby little, no or the, the fatter, thicker knob that this one has as opposed to the small one that the Si has. It also has a little bit of a longer throw. I would prefer a shorter throw, and I do like the clutch in this car. It engages pretty much right in the middle of the travel, right where I want it. It's also extremely light, um, so you know, getting stuck in traffic in this car it wouldn't really be much of a problem. Now, 
even though this car is a turbo Ford, it's front wheel drive, it doesn't really have much torque steer. That's something the GLI and the GTI are very, very good at managing. It's because the turbo engine doesn't have as much power. We're not looking at Focus ST or Mazda Speed Free Power here, but you know, that's not to say that this car is slow. It'll still hit 60 in about six and a half seconds, which is a tad slower than the SI, but it's still very, very quick. So it's not like this car is slow. And of course, some of you out there, um, Anything that's you know slower than a Mazda Speed 3 or a Focus ST, you're gonna say it's slow, or even the current SI people say it's slow, but th this is enough power for me and to the for the person looking for that grown-up uh, enthusiast sport compact car, the GLI will serve them just fine. Now we're coming up to the conclusion of this video, and I have to say, the GLI is still a pretty impressive car. Um, if you guys want to choose this thing for your sport compact uh, choice as a daily driver, it's an excellent daily driver. It's very practical, it's very refined, it's something you can use every day, and it gets decently good gas mileage as well, and it's relatively quick. I mean, this thing doesn't scream boy racer like the Speed 3, Focus ST, or SI would. It's a lot more subdued, and that's the reason why a lot of people would choose a German um, sport combat car like the GLI or the GTI. Now, that being said, there are a couple of negatives with this car. For one, the touchscreen radio, it's pretty old. Um, Volkswagen's got a newer system coming out in the GTI. The interior of this car, while I applaud them for the soft touch dash, it's still pretty cheap compared to some of its competition. Even the 2014 SI has a little bit of a nicer looking interior and the materials are a little bit nicer, a little bit more soft touch. And in terms of feature content, I'm very disappointed with the fact that this Autobahn model, which is supposed to be like the top of the line model, is missing push to start. It's missing a backup camera. Uh, it's missing those HID headlights, which look fantastic. And this car looks a little bit cheap without them, honestly. And I hate how you have to get the nav model to get that. Honestly, if you're gonna get, make me get the nav model, it should only be like a thousand more, and it should just give you nav and maybe some real-time traffic. I shouldn't have to pair all those other features that I want into the Autobahn with nav model. I just give it to me in the Autobahn package. And then, of course, in terms of price, this is a little bit more expensive. Uh, this particular one I'm driving is about 27.5. You know, for that kind of money, um, you know, you could buy. You, you could get a loaded ST or a loaded Speed 3. It'll have nav, it'll have most of the features that you want, or even an SI. An SI is about $4,000 cheaper than this in base form, and it basically gives you all the features, features of this car, plus more, like a backup camera, push to start, uh, the Honda Lane Watch system, and the touchscreen radio. So those of you who are looking for a little bit more feature content, you're gonna be a little bit disappointed in the GLI. However, if you're looking for the most mature uh, sport compact on the market, this is a really good choice. Just know it's a little bit more expensive than its competition, and the tech features are getting pretty old. However, BW is updating the Jetta for 2015. Stay tuned for my review when the 2015 model comes out. It has a few subtle updates. Uh, we did show the you the car at the auto show. Anyways, guys, hope you have enjoyed my overview of this 2014 GLI Autobahn. Uh, if you are looking for a sport compact, make sure you check this one out uh, as well, in addition to the rest of the competition. Hope you guys enjoyed everything. I'll catch you all in the next video.